Francis, how are you? Hey, Brian, how are you going? You're right. Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, first off, um, congratulations on the film, and I, I, I really was blown away by it. Um, Thank you. There's one thing I noticed, and I don't know if this is just because I'm married to a middle child, a middle child woman, <laughs> but I'm one of three sisters as well. But oh, well. there is a kind of middle child. Middle child syndrome is a thing of they're very, very sensitive and they're very, very aware <laughs> of, you know, the they don't get their place. Their, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Their place. Um, I'm wondering, I mean, was that a factor when you were writing Emily? I mean, obviously, Emily Bronte's life is very well documented and what have you. But I mean, I'm wondering, I mean, was that a factor in when you were writing and I guess creating the character? I mean, I really do. I, I've always had a kind of strong identification with Emily. I don't know if it's because I'm a middle child and and she is too. I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but for me, I kind of for me, I kind of connect to her. I'm an introvert. She's an introvert. Um, and for me, I always felt like she was very true to who she who she really was. Like she was okay that she was that she liked to be by herself and she just wanted to write. And so I kind of feel like. That's kind of the aspect that I liked about her, but you know, you're probably right. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's <laughs> no, I mean, I was watching it and I was like, my, this is my wife, literally to a T, like very <laughs> sensitive, you know, very much her own person, kind of, but then has a little bit of a chip on her shoulder about the perfect. About that she doesn't get, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The perfect older sister. That was the one that I was like, yep, I've seen that. Sick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you talk to me about um, uh, Emma Mackey? Because, I mean, I mean, obviously, I know her from sex education and her role, her character in sex education has is very, very different. I mean, was there a specific performance or was there something in the audition that you connected with that made you think that's her? I mean, I I hadn't watched sex education, but I'd heard that she was very good in that show. And my casting director, Fiona Weir, said, oh, you really should check out Emma. Let's get her into read. And she came in and read and she did the first scene. And I remember just looking over to Fiona and thinking, oh my God, I think we've already found it. There was just something about, I just felt like she had something to say about this part. And also, and it turns out that she loves, also loves Emily Bronte. So I think that's kind of really cool. And she was, she's just very much her own person in the way that Emily was. She's super smart. And, you know, she, she also looks kind of, I mean, she's an incredibly beautiful woman, but she also can also look, you can understand why um, her sister's call in this, where we shoot her, the strange one, because she she's kind of has this a kind of unusual kind of... Uh, way of carrying herself. Aesthetic, aesthetic to her. Yeah. You know? And it's very kind of other otherworldly in, 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 a, in a way. Yeah. yeah. Was there, I mean... And she's just a great actor too. With yeah. Her. Oh no. Yeah, yeah. No. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Um. I mean, one thing that I've noticed about, and I I don't like using the word because I think it's kind of a little bit disparaging, but kind of like these Regency core films, that they generally tend to be quite, I I think anyway, they tend to be quite chaste, and I mean I know there's a thing of you know less is more and you know the female gaze versus the male gaze and all that kind of stuff, but in this, I mean, what I found interesting was you really leaned into the fact that, you know, Emily Bronte was doing opium and was smoking with her brother and was, <laughs> no, but I mean, I, and then was actually seen having sex with um, uh, uh, the Reverend and stuff. And I'm wondering, I mean, was that, was your choice to include all those things? I mean, was that just a case of that's the truth of what happened? Or was it a case of, no, I want to put this in because this actually happened and these people weren't as chaste and as, it, it really wasn't I wasn't really looking at it through that lens of like oh let's be sensational and no yeah yeah, yeah. I, but for me like once I'd kind of settled on the theme of the piece which is like how how do you as a person if you are someone who for who life is difficult to to get in and to live how how do you get how do you um how, how do you get out there and and risk yourself when you you know in terms of like being an artist and um, and experiencing enough life so that you you have something to say because you lived in a, lived a, lived you know you've got out there and experimented with life and I think that was a theme that I was interested in exploring through the character of Emily and you know that she tries all these different things and it's kind of like you know we kind of set it up in the, at the in that first scene how did you write Wuthering Heights and so we kind of like you know people sort of say well how did such a 
somebody who lives such a private, quiet life, right? This amazing kind of uh, gothic kind of uh, novel. And so I kind of give the audience that, but in the, at, in the end of the day, when she sits down to write, I kind of feel like whatever happened, she was always going to write something brilliant because she is an authentic person and hanging on to her authentic voice is very important to her. And that's why that book is so good. Yeah. I mean, I mean the first book that Charlotte wrote was The Professor. I mean, have you ever read that? No, I have. I yeah. actually have. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have Wuthering Heights right here, though, just so yeah, you know. Yeah, oh, cool, oh, cool. Well, that's the thing, like, um, the second book that Charlotte wrote was Jane Eyre, but it was only after yeah. she'd, written, she'd read Wuthering Heights, you know, which is really written from a very true kind of space. So that's, I think that's interesting. Yeah. Do you um, think, yeah. I mean, you as, a, as an actor and now as a director, I mean, do you think you need to go through, uh, and this would be a question I'd ask any artist, but like, it just yeah. specifically, I mean, do you think you need to go through pain in order to, have something to say. I mean, because I know there, um, I know there are some some actor, some artists would say no. I mean, pain doesn't make you a better artist. But I know there are others that would. I mean, I'm just wondering what you think. I don't think you have to look for pain. <laughs> yeah. Life, will, life yeah. will give it to you. Like yeah, exactly. sooner or later, once yeah. you've lived enough life, you'll be like, oh, okay, that's that hurts. <laughs> yeah, you've got enough mileage now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think it just like you don't have to look for it, and I, maybe that's what kind of what you're referencing is like. There's a lot of, you know, like there's like the kind of tortured artist thing. Like I have to be tortured to create art, but I feel like, um, and that, you know, I think that there's, you know, that part of the artistic kind of personality is, 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 you know, to kind of be in the throes of emotion. Or, but um, I, I feel like for me, writing art makes sense of all the kind of chaos that you've lived through. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in terms of like, yeah, and that's kind of the mean the meaning of the thing at the end when yeah. she's down to write that like maybe things didn't work out for her in some ways but she there's always story yeah of course yeah. and that like it'll help you to process whatever it is you're going through like that art is a, art can help you process pain like totally that. yeah yeah that's really true yeah um what if any films did you watch during pre-production or post-production or not pre-production and production i say i mean i think um like alejandro uh gonzalez in Uratu, his film beautiful I really love and I feel like he does this thing where everything feels very real but then there's that kind of supernatural element to it as well right next to each other so that's an inspiration to me and then I love Jacques Audiard's and Prophet like for me that felt like the handheld camera work was something that I loved and I wanted to put into this so that it feels very real it doesn't feel like you're watching the film behind a pane of glass you're right in there with the characters so those films I loved um uh, Bright Star with Jane Campion. I feel like the way they she kind of told that story really speaks to this film. But you know what I watched, which is kind of not really related, but it kind of I found it very freeing was Paolo um, Sorrentino, you know, who did um, the Great Beauty and all that. Great Beauty. Yeah. You know, like he just he sometimes just gets into stream of consciousness stuff yeah. that that also makes sense, but it's not yeah. kind of linear. And so I, I I kind of discovered him just before we started shooting. So I don't know if that freed me up at all, but I find his his films really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. you find, I mean, with when you're working with material like this, that is quite, like, I, as you said it yourself, I mean, it's, it's very much a gothic romance and what have you. I mean, mm. does it allow you, do you allow yourself moments of levity? I mean, do you allow yourself kind of, how do you, I suppose, how do you depressurize? Or was it a very pressured set, like, or anything like that? I mean, I mean it was, was pressured it? for time, but like we really, we had two weeks rehearsal. So, and I felt it's really important when you put actors together that they kind of really get to know each other because I feel like anyone can do a close up by themselves without even connecting to the other person. But if you mm -hmm. do connect to the other actor in a way that's real, um, you're going to get something special. So we tried to kind of create that on set. But, um, you know, I think in the script, there's kind of little moments of little kind of little moments of levity mm. um, that kind of help release the pressure because there's kind of moments where it does feel quite emotional in a tense way. So mm. and then also, you know, we did also have fun and, you know, actors are just all those young actors were, you know. Yeah, exactly. Making their TikToks and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm getting the wrap up, so I'll leave it there. Oh, cool. Oh, well, lovely right. chat to you. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>
way to save me. 